In this video, I'm going to show you what true repentance means and how to obtain it. If you are someone that has struggled with sin and wonder how you can obtain freedom from the works of the flesh, then this video is for you. The power of God is available to overcome the flesh, and I will show you how to access it. There is a very clear picture in the Bible on what true repentance looks like and the steps involved in obtaining it. Before I get into this powerful revelation, I first want to point out what false repentance looks like so you won't be confused. False repentance looks like a person that confesses their sins, receives forgiveness, but goes right back into the same sin. They may even shed tears and feel remorse, but this person is not truly repenting. They may even go to church every Sunday, but they are not walking in the power of God. The scripture for this kind of person is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, which says, Having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. These are strong words, but it's the truth. The modern-day church has been guilty of denying the power of God. This must change if we are going to become the bride of Christ that is without spot or blemish. This brings me to the meaning of the word repentance. Repentance means change. When you truly repent, you cease from what you did before. The modern-day church has used the law and attempted to perfect the flesh into changing, but it does not work like that. You can see the failure with this in Colossians 2 verses 21 through 23. To summarize these verses, the law will not restrain your flesh from desiring sin. Paul the Apostle says in Galatians 2:21, If righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. It's not the power of the law that will set you free from your sinful nature and bring true repentance. It's the power of God through the cross that crucifies your flesh in order to walk in the Spirit. Let's now go into how to access this power according to the Bible. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. This verse is the blueprint for true repentance. In this verse, we see four key points listed, which are, 1. Desire to go after him. The word translated as desire means will. Your will must be to go after him. 2. Deny yourself. This means no more committing acts of the flesh. 3. Take up your cross daily. This means you trade your unrighteousness for his righteousness. 4. You follow him. This means you walk in the spirit after the affections and lust of the flesh are crucified. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus telling his disciples to watch and pray in order to avoid temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was tempted in the garden, and he knew he was being tempted because he was watching. He was being tempted to not go through with the crucifixion on the cross. He even says that his soul was exceedingly sorrowful. Just like in Luke 9.23, we see Jesus going through each step of repentance. Here's an example prayer that you can use when facing temptation. I take up my cross and die to, name of sin, I testify that I have the righteousness that Christ has given to me by his grace. Here's another example prayer. I take up my cross and die to the things in my flesh and the things in this world. I testify that I have the mind of Christ and his righteousness which were given to me freely by his grace through my faith in him. As you grow in this revelation of going to the cross to exchange your unrighteousness for his righteousness, 
You can even pray Galatians 2.20. The way true repentance works is through the power of the cross. At the cross, you trade the old for the new. You are redeemed. The word redeem means to turn in and receive something in exchange. You put off your old man and put on the new man. You change with the power of the cross. I will now read some scriptures that affirm this teaching on repentance. Romans 6, verses 6 and 7, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Ephesians 4, verses 22 through 24, that you put off according to your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. True repentance is changing your will into his will. No more committing acts of the flesh. You wake up from the darkness of sin and walk in the light. When walking in the light, you will have the ability to watch for temptation. When tempted, you trade at the cross through prayer. You trade your sinful nature for the divine nature of God. You trade your unrighteousness for His righteousness. You become like Christ as you take up your cross daily. Next, you follow Christ in the Spirit. Once the affections and lusts of the flesh are crucified, then you can walk in the Spirit. I believe this teaching is so profound that I want to reiterate it once again in a different way, in order to portray how deep it goes. First off, we must desire to go after Him. In Romans 2.4, it tells us that the goodness of God is what leads us to repentance. When a person experiences the goodness of God, they desire to go after Him. To deny yourself is to humble yourself. In James 4.6, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We need His grace in order to have the power to fully repent. True repentance is not something we can do apart from God. You take up your cross and turn from your wicked ways. You crucify yourself by counting yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. All of your body parts should be counted as dead to sin and alive for God to serve Him in His righteousness. You can find this in Romans 6, verses 11 through 13. When you follow Him, you become His disciple. You have come to the state of true repentance. John 8, verses 31 through 32 tells us, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. By following him and becoming his disciple, you ultimately become free of sin. This is the last step in repentance. Once you have fully repented from sin, you should be focused upon doing his will. You don't want to go back into sin. Lies can lead people astray and that must be guarded against. You should always keep your focus on His Word, which is the truth. By doing His will, you love Him, and there's a special promise in John 14 verse 23 to those that do this.